Is punching a Nazi a good or a bad thing? Or something else completely? Yeah, this is a thing now. So, somebody punched a modern day Nazi, I guess that would be a neo-Nazi, whatever you call them, I don't know. And now there's this whole debate going on on whether or not it's okay to punch a Nazi. Uh, okay, I guess I have to throw my ideas into this mix and hopefully get some logic in there. <laughs> Alright, so there's a difference between an action taken by an individual that the law would be against and an action taken by an individual or a group that the law is for. So if you are for punching the Nazi or whoever without a fair trial, then you are outside the boundaries of the law. If you are for the trial process of which the punching is the punishment in this particular trial for whatever reason, then you are within the boundaries of the law. And the question is, I think, not necessarily about ethics, but about whether or not you want to be constrained by the law under these circumstances. This person is bad. They have said X, Y, and Z. They have proclaimed their hatred and their intentions to do evil. They haven't done anything to you directly. They've just said words, and that is important. There's a difference between somebody saying words at me and me being safe other than emotions and somebody doing something to me that causes me harm or causes my property harm or causes others harm or even causes themselves harm. There's a big difference between words and actions. I'm going to go to war and destroy a thousand people. Well, okay. We'd really like you not to do that. And we're going to try to stop you from doing that. <laughs> okay. you Yes. Great. But until you do something, then what can we really do about that? Now, there is punishment for saying some words. If I go into a theater and I scream fire and there's no fire and everybody runs and it you know causes it might cause damage to the theater or each other and even if it does it I am still responsible for those words and I can be held responsible for those words and a trial can be done and I can get punished for what I said. But if I go to a theater and I scream fire and somebody comes up and punches me in the face for doing that, they are in the wrong as well. Now, what the punishment would be depends upon the severity of the crime and that's up to the laws that we have in place and ultimately the judge in the hearing decides which is worse, screaming fire or getting punched in the face probably getting punched in the face, but it depends, I suppose. How many people did I injure by screaming fire? Don't know. Now, if nobody is actually being harmed, but my scream is an incent to riot, that can be punished greater than otherwise. But again, we're talking about things within the legal system and things outside of the legal system. And we like to glamorize the Wild West and it isn't the way that it's depicted in, in, in movies and television shows, but nonetheless, this idea that it was lawless, which isn't really true, is a popular meme, so I'll go with it. You know, you could pull out your gun and shoot anybody and 
it would be fine. You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't become a criminal necessarily if you had a shootout between somebody. Uh, although, maybe you would. I, you know, again, it's not really a true meme that there was no law. There was law. But let's just say that that's the case. You know, go back to the days of dueling. And we have a debate. Well, let's duel. Let's take our pistol, one shot. You know, we line up against each other. We take, you know, however many paces, ten paces out and turn around and shoot. And whoever did that a little bit faster or maybe cheated wins. Is that what we're saying by saying, yes, it's okay to punch somebody for what they say or what they are? That person's evil and has said nothing but evil and... They've incented pe people to riot, and they've uh, caused problems with their words. And maybe they've even done stuff themselves that's bad. So I get to punch them in the face because of that. I get to break the law now because it's convenient. If the argument is, yes, you get to break the law because this person is horrible, then what use is the law? Because I can say anybody is horrible to any degree, and now what? The whole point of the law is to prevent social breakdown to some degree, isn't it? Now, maybe I want to punch that person really, really badly, but... It's still illegal for me to do so. The morality is a side issue. But people like to focus on the ethical conundrum. Is it okay to punch somebody? Forget about the law. Is it okay to punch somebody that's evil? Well, if punching is also evil, then no. It isn't, because if by punching somebody you have become somewhat evil, then punching somebody that is evil makes you evil, therefore, no, it's not okay. If you don't find punching to be evil, then if they've done nothing but punch people, they're not evil, thus you cannot punch them. So, what would your standards be and how would those ethic work that allows you to punch somebody because of X, but not because of Y? Depending on what your ethics are would outline what your morality is and your response to the situation. So your morality depends upon your ethical system. And as long as your ethical system is always applied the same way in the same situations or similar situations or at least applied similarly enough then you have a workable ethical system but morality is something people like to paint into this objective versus subjective realm that you know there's a true good and there's a true evil and there's and there's very little uh, nuance for shades of gray Maybe you're a moral re uh, objectivist, maybe you're a subjectivist, maybe you're somewhere in between. Uh, I, I, my morals are, are utilitarian, so the least harm to the least amount of people, the most good for the most amount of people, is a very simple way to put that. So here, if my punch to that person's face will stop them from doing harm, and I absolutely know for sure that that would be the case, then I should. But, I have to also look at the possible and potential consequence that my action has on society around me. If my punching of this person does, in fact, prevent them from doing harm, but then creates a situation where other people think it's okay to punch people, because they'll stop perceived harms, then it's only a matter of time before I get punched. And if I'm fine with that possibility, then my ethics are sound. If not, then my ethics are flawed. So this is, of course, the slippery slope. Now, 
is a slippery slope always fallacious? Yeah, yes it is. It is all it's always there isn't there isn't a slippery slope that isn't fallacious. But we're recognizing that this is a possible thing that could happen. So it's okay that it's a slippery slope. No, it's still not logical argument by itself. Just because my punch to that person's face, maybe in this case will even kill them, which will certainly prevent them from saying anything else or doing anything. Maybe that will cause more people to punch, or maybe it will excite the followers of that person to do more violence and more harm. Which, in case my punch didn't solve anything, it actually created more problems, which means, at least based on utilitarian ethics, punching that person was wrong. Even though I'm not sure that the slippery slope will complete itself, the possibility that what I'm doing will create more problems is something to take note of. But more to the point, the least harm to the least amount of people also, to me at least, means not punching anybody at all. Ever. Ideally. Now, obviously, there is always an exception to such things. That's why I said ideally. If somebody punches me, I'm probably going to punch back. Just because that's how our reflexes work. Ideally, I would prefer to subdue them in a different manner that might cause pain, but not as much pain as a punch could cause. Besides, if I punch them this way, I might break my knuckles. That's why it's better punch like this, like whatever. But anyways, <laughs> there's a whole discussion about what's the proper way to punch. I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> but yeah, I, if you see this action is bad, punching somebody, morally speaking, is always wrong universally. That's an objective moral value that you've adhered to because it causes harm. And there's no good reason to cause that harm at all. If you can accomplish the same thing without causing harm. If you want to silence someone, put them in a place where they cannot speak or, or if they do speak it will not be heard by others. If you want to stop somebody non-violently, there are ways to do that. If you want to stop an organization, a whole group of people, it's harder than stopping an individual, but it's still possible with little to no violence. Violence might be needed. It might be the case that you have to punch somebody to knock them out so that they don't struggle to arrest them. But... You want to try to prevent this. This is why people are against police brutality. It's unnecessary to keep hitting somebody when they're down. They're down. Especially if they surrender and you see people, you know, tackle somebody or whatever. Yeah, that's excessive. You didn't need to do that. You only needed one person to take that person down. A taser rather than a pistol. Because a taser might kill them, but it has a very low percentage of doing that compared to a gun. So, choosing the least uh, possible pain is something we prefer. Even when we absolutely despise the person and everything that they stand for. Morality, though, again, is not my morality. Your morality is based on your ethics, and your ethical system. And like I said, as long as it's consistent, then you'll always get the same results. So if punching is okay, given condition X, Y, and Z, then punching is always okay, given those same conditions, regardless of who we're talking about. But it has to be defined to that degree. Otherwise, your ethical system isn't very helpful or useful. Back to the law, 
if we don't want to worry about morality and just adhere to the legal system, if we want to say that right and wrong are defined by laws, it's wrong to hit somebody because it's illegal to hit somebody, then case over. Hitting anybody for any reason is illegal, period. End of story. And if saying words is legal, depending on certain words and what those words are, given certain constraints, then, you know, okay, then maybe they're doing something illegal. But you cannot respond to an illegal action with more illegal action. It's kind of like if somebody is robbing a bank, to be like, wait, wait, I'm going to rob the bank first so you can't rob the bank. What? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Or, well, maybe that's a bad analogy. Maybe it's like stealing the Constitution so that you can find the treasure before the bad guy does. Because they don't believe you that that there's a map on the back of the Constitution, I, I guess. I, I, whatever. Okay, so why did I bring that movie into this? So, is punching a Nazi wrong? Depends on your ethics. Is it illegal? Yes. Yes, it's illegal. Is what they said illegal? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it is. If they're incenting people to riot, yeah. If it's hate speech, yeah. Uh, it just depends. Okay, deconverted man. What's your stance, though, on freedom of speech? Hmm. We don't have true freedom. We have limitations on freedom of speech. Uh, in fact, freedom of speech isn't really truly free. Like I said, can't go into a theater and scream fire. Can't yell to my friend Jack in an airport. Hi, Jack! Doing this has consequences. Would it be better to have a society where all things are allowed to be said? Maybe. I don't know. Where if I, I can go into a theater and scream fire, and then that would be not legal, not illegal to do. I don't know. I don't know if that would be good or bad. I have no idea what that what that society would look like. But going back to my ethics, I think that the least amount of harm that we can do with our speech would be what we want to make into law, so that. Things like screaming fire in a theater are not legal because they can cause potential harm. Also, because if, unless there is a if there is a fire, you get the problem of screaming wolf, where you know somebody came in and screamed fire, and everybody's like, you know, whatever. It's just you know somebody exercising their freedom of speech. The next person comes in, no, really, there's a fire, and nobody believes them. That could cause harm. So. Laws that limit what you can say for good reasons are inevitably part of trying to negate harm. But you have to be really, really, really careful with that. Because some harm is fine. It doesn't matter if your feelings get hurt. But some people think it does. And now we have laws slowly trying to be introduced, or we at least have people pushing the idea that saying words that harm people should be illegal or should be wrong. I think that's going a bit far. At any rate, so I'm going to go punch some Nazis. Wait, no I'm not. I'm going to sucker punch them. That way they will not see that coming. <laughs>